from Mob TV. All right, good evening. My name is Donald, and this is Mob TV. And we have um, one of the veterans of Nollywood dated back in the days of the back back. He's been a very great person, a legend to reckon with, an icon of some sort, somebody who a lot of people watch growing up, and I'm included in those people, an inspiration of some sort. And um, it's been my pleasure to introduce to you not a person, but of a Felako Mbaka. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Sir, a lot of people to you are many things to many people. And um, some call you a legend, icon from the eastern part of Nigeria, a movie, actor, and all that. How best can you describe yourself? Well, um, <clears throat> just like you said at the earlier beginning, my name is Sofia Fulagombaka. I'm an actor, a producer, a director, an editor, a cinematographer. Um, not trying to be jack of all trade, but um, in the industry where we survive from, you really have to know at least a little about everything. Wow. So um, I am myself. I try not to play any other person than myself. And um, with no apologies, I don't uh, apologize to people based on who I am because I am who God has made me to be. So I remain myself. That's great. That's a great way to actually, and a remarkable way to define yourself. You are who you are. Um, there is this um, perception, or a lot of people saying that the much work given into the level, much level given into Nollywood, and the benefits that comes afterward, they are not commensurate in, in any way at all. Like a lot of labor is put in, but the benefits are not quite put side by side the labor put in. How do you respond to that? Well, uh, I will start by saying um, most of us, uh, most people who come into the industry, they begin to think about counting millions. But I will tell you, if you are not passion-driven, you will not, you will not be part of this industry. Because the point is that most jobs that you may have done and you feel you've put in your best, you might, at the end of the day, get peanuts. And the ones you least expect, the pay will come. It will come. But what I keep telling people out there, no matter how small you make, get some small things to keep to remember those small jobs you've done. And if uh, by virtue of chance, circumstance, you do a job that will give you something big, let's still try to think of investing, no matter how small it is. The point is this, um, we don't grow young in this business, we grow old. And uh, as much as we know we grow old, we have to be moving with time. People will say time goes by. No, time don't go. It still remains there. We are the people growing old. So I don't know about you or you who is listening to us, watching us right now. Time doesn't go by. It's we that grow old. Time will always remain there. So if you're talking about the remuneration that comes in industry, yes, it might be as poor as anything. But then, if you arrange yourself well, with little, you can make it big. Wow, wow, that's great. So you've heard, if you arrange yourself well with little, you can actually make it big. Then that brings us to a point. You actually pointed something about income then. And um, do you have any other hustle, like a side hustle? You put side by side making movies, like filmmaking, you know. Is there any other thing you do? Very well. There are other things I do. You know, um, like they tell us you cannot cast all your eggs in one basket. So off here for Lago, you're seeing here, just like I said, not only I am an actor, I'm a director, I am a producer, I'm a cinematographer, I am an editor. But outside that, in the industry, I'm into real estate, you know. Um, well, some people will call it buying and selling. In case you need any, I can tell you doing business with me is just like consider it done because even if I run, I cannot hide. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm into real estate and then um, in my little nature, because uh, we don't, uh, like they say, I don't know if we be killing mom. We do some other things. I, I virtually have delved into buildings. We do supplies. Like I said, but the industry, I would say it any time, any day, it's passion driven. Most of us who are there, not really because of the money, 
though money means everything, you know what I mean, yeah. But then um, if we are looking at it from that perspective of, okay, how many millions you make, no, 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 it's not like that. Some people will equally meet me, hey, I want to be part of the industry, I'll do this. I will always ask you, what level of education have you attained? If you have not gotten admission at least to be in the university, I will advise you, go and get admission. Then with what you do in school, you'll be able to map out time. But if you have not gotten to a level in your education, obviously you will not uh, so higher in the industry. You know, there is this, um, would I say, it's a rumor or a fact that is going on around the industry or around the whole airways, the cyberspace, saying that it's as though the ladies in the industry are the ones cashing out in the industry. Let me put it in perspective. You, you just hear a fan dash this person, a Venza, and he's a girl. And Nollywood Atres bought a house. Nollywood Atres bought a new car, bought a house in the U.S. And when you look at the pedigree of that artist when it comes to the ranking, she's not ranking high. And it's as though the men are not soaring or cashing out that way. How do you respond to that insinuation? Well, um, if at all something like that has happened... I will at the same time tell you that um, man was made from a raw material and the woman was made from a finished product. Oh. You see, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, I am married. There are things personally I would want to go through because I am the man. I will not allow my wife to go through the same stress. Even if it's um, <clears throat> maybe a side chick. Personally, like, anytime I drive along the road and I see a woman with a baby or two on top bike, it distorts my, my thoughts. Yeah. To the point that one of the days I saw one and the way the Okada guy was meandering and I just followed, I came close, I waved them down, they stopped. Where are you going to? He told me, I said, okay, can you with your kids get into my car? We'll drop you there. So if such happens to people, uh, the female folks in the industry, I would say call it grace. Uh, you are from the eastern part of Nigeria. And uh, we, we, okay, let's talk about our country, our nation. This is where we are, our home, the only country we have for now. And there is this uh, agitation. Some people are saying restructuring. Some people are talking about giving us a sovereign country called Biafra. There was a country. Let's go back to who we used to be. And um, some people are saying, no, we are comfortable at the pace we are going with. So, And these things are just being more like a rancor, a huge rancor. We, international bodies are involved, killings everywhere. How do you respond to um, a thing like this, knowing your influence in this society? Well, I will not use the adage that says... Um a madman who saw somebody with knife behind him, he says he will not say or do anything till he looks for his head and is no longer seated on the neck. Each and every one of us, whether you're a Christian or you're a Muslim or you're a pagan or you're a Hindu, we have conscience. Those things you do to people, when they do it to you, will you like, oh, wow, praise God, hallelujah? If you, could not, if you cannot do that, then stop it. That's the only thing I would just say because the point is that even when we know they try to like uh, pass a bill on his speech, if you are the helm of affair and I say something that you don't like or something bad that you're doing, you can target to his speech. Yeah. Because I remember sometime in the past when they talked about indecent dressing. One of the speakers in the house now said, if you are talking about indecent dressing in a public place, when you now go to a beach, or a hotel swimming pool, and you see a lady putting on his bikini and bra, will you now charge the person in the same dressing? Because doing such is an avenue for the Nigerian police to make money. Yes. So anytime we are doing anything, it's better we define it. If we don't, my brother, I will tell you, some people from any other end will use that to make ends meet. Yes. So that's what I would just say. Even the government of the country where we belong, or the government of the country where we anticipate to have, if we do not correct it and we have Biafra today, the same thing will happen. But for me, if giving us Biafra will solve our case, let us have Biafra. I owe nobody any apologies. I don't care whoever is listening to me. If having Biafra will make us have peace, when you're sleeping, you sleep with your two eyes closed, let us have it. 
Because for how long can we continue or will we continue to be scared and afraid in our own country? It doesn't make sense. Yes. Most people who have phobia for flying, they don't see themselves flying because the roads are no more safe. We are not talking about bad roads. We are, we are talking about hoodlums who are on the roads. Killing people. Killing people. So whoever cares to listen to me, let him do. Let him do that. So whether Nigeria or Biafra, we know what is good. And I'm sure when we do what is good, our conscience, our God and people around us will be happy with us. All right. A lot of people have been trying to find out, um, you know, your surname is Mbaka. And there is a very popular cleric who has been backdated, like he's been a force to reckon with. And here, like, um, is Ofe Falako Mbaka, actually a brother to um, Reverend Father Mbaka. So they want to know your relationship and this into the fact that you guys come from the same state. So what is your relationship with um, Father Reverend Mbaka? Uh, I know we don't answer question with question. You say they want to know or you want to know? We all want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, most times when I say yes, people will think I want to claim that relationship. And when I say no, they feel I'm running away from it. But um, by his grace, we happened to know each other way back when I was in the seminary because I went to a missionary school, okay. you know? Back in the days when some of them comes to comes for apostolic work in our school, do you have a senior brother in the senior, uh, senior seminary? I will tell them no. And when they go back, they will ask him, do you have any younger brother in the junior seminary? He will say no. But because of the name, we got to know each other. And ever since then, uh, I must say, my spiritual life would not be complete without him. If you are anointed in whichever form, just come and do it and then uh, let's give thanks to God. There are people we know, okay, this is their calling. This is their calling. So if you know that person who has been called, whatever thing he or she does, leave that between him and his God, between her and her God, or her conscience or his conscience. Whatever the person does, I will tell you, heavenly race is per head. No matter what I do, being good, and I'll go to heaven, that will not lead my wife or any of my kids to heaven. And if I'm doing it on the negative side, it will neither lead them to that same place. So whatever you do as a person will be judged against you. All right. So um, let's go back a little bit in retrospect. You know, you joined this industry when it was not really what it is right now. People were not proud to reckon with it. So and family, we know like somebody coming from a very conservative um, part of the country. How did you battle family? trying to hint you or trying to interfere or did they give you full support to join the Nollywood industry? My brother, the kind of family I came from, my father, very meticulous and very conservative. He never liked it one bit. Something happened one day, I think uh, like five years I left the school or I left university. We got talking and uh, he was my best friend, I must tell you. He's late now, but we'll see, move on. There was something he said and I told him, Pale, eh, you get locked side, they do female. <laughs> if no be am, I go, they move your thing, so no be side, I go, steal am. Just change the position. Uh, you know, that kind of a thing, keeping it well instead of... Uh... The point is that whatever thing you can do, you listening to us right now, Whatever thing you can do to better yourself, to get income for yourself, please begin to do it or begin now to learn it. If we are talking about a white-collar job, my brother, you can't see it anywhere. Even when you see it, there will be a million of you after that one space. So I will tell you, it wasn't a funny one, but I know in life, whatever thing you do, be consistent. Be resilient, because at the end of the day, you will always see a sign of light. All right, this interview wouldn't be complete if we don't talk about your family, your wife, your children. They've been there for you in the days where you had very tight schedules. They've always understood you. So what do you have to say about them? 
Well, I must say I've been blessed with um, the wife God has given me. As a matter of fact, I never prayed God to give me a woman to marry. I prayed God to give me a wife. Uh, this job we've been doing now, um, as I yesterday, she called me to say, okay, three days ago, tomorrow we'll make it three weeks. Wait, you're out. And you're still in Abuja. When are you guys getting done with? And I'll keep telling him, you know what we face on the job. Most times you plan your schedule. Maybe you're going to shoot SYZ today, tomorrow. It's all done. Today you won't even deal with X, not to talk about YZ. YZ. So it continues like that. I thank God for the understanding. And uh, I equally, God has blessed me with lovely kids. That most times uh, I, I may not have been home and my wife will be troubled. Ah, blah, blah, blah. My son will like, hey, mommy, cool down. I am in charge. Whoa. You know? <laughs> and that goes a long way to like tell Come me, ah, thank God for these kids. I have wonderful kids. I've been blessed with a son and two beautiful damsels, wow. you know? Uh -huh. So I think because of that too, I, 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 I've been able to buy some dogs and I'm breeding them. <laughs> so whoever tries to come around, <laughs> if you survive one, two, you will survive the third, the third one. one. Yeah, <laughs> so that's it. So I, I thank God I have a wonderful home and um, though it's not been easy, but um, we should be able to know that every marriage has its own peculiar challenges. I have mine and uh, with God on my side, I am pushing. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. I really do appreciate it. And um, what do you have to say finally to the people viewing, your fans? Well, uh, I think I've got enough fans. I want to have ACs now. Um, <laughs> but all the same, just keep doing something that is good. Just have conscience that that which you would do to others and they will not like it. I am sure you wouldn't like such to be done to you. But that which you know when they do it to you, you will love it. Please, go ahead and do it to others. And then let's have this uh, harmony amongst people. You never can tell who will be of help to you. Nobody is an island. You might have money, you have it in quantum, but there are things that I have that you don't have. So maybe when you need that which I have, obviously, we exchange it with your money, but money is not everything, but it's important to our lives. Thank you.